Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Freshwater Ministries. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Honored to be before you today. Praise the Lord. We're honored to be before you. Ask a Deacon Connie to get some get some opening scripture and prayer ready. She's gonna help me save my voice. I'm uh, I might not be uh, doing too much today. <clears throat> I'll do as much as God gives me. Amen? Amen. So I'm glad to have you all here. Welcome to Freshwater Ministries. You know, we're doing things different here, differently here today, or this from now on. Um, we are we are a different type of church. And Deacon Connie hasn't been privileged to it because she's been taking care of her daughter. Amen. But uh, we have now what we call family time. And the family time comes at the end of the message. And what we do is we kind of discuss the message. We kind of sit and talk about it. The reason I want to do this and the reason I'm being led to do this is that we need to connect together as a family, number one, to walk in unity. Number two, it helps with understanding. And it helps us ask questions. Hopefully that I can answer. If not, I will find the answers and get them to you. Because I don't know everything. But we will we will walk through the scriptures together and we'll work it out. Amen. <clears throat> so at this time we'll ask Deacon Connie to come up. If she'll be so gracious. Praise the Lord. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let's give God a shout out and a glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. Let's give him a shout out. You know, like I often say, it's a, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes. One more time, you're giving us the opportunity to come together. And so, God, I am just, I've been gone for a while because my daughter had heart surgery. She has another one coming up. Oh, good. Second week of um, August. So please keep her in your prayer. Yes. Pray oh. this week. But I'm going to read from you this morning in Psalms 67. And I had no idea. I just, this just popped up. Okay. okay. I was just changing it. Uh, it says, May God be merciful and bless us. May his face shine with favor on us. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere, and may the nation praise you, O oh God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy, because you govern the nations, and with justice and you guide the people of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O oh God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth we yield its harvest, and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us. And people all over the world will fear him. So as I was saying this morning, I have a lot to be thankful for this morning. Yes. You know, there's so many people today in different parts of the world, you know, woke up this morning, they were hungry, couldn't feed their kids, no shelter, no, no food, no nothing. So I think when we are in the presence of the Lord, we should just give him some thanks this morning, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it could have been us. It could have been one of us. But we praise God that we are here today to just praise him and to worship him one more time. Yes. And so God, it's, I pray this morning, I pray that you would breathe on us today, God. I pray that our hearts, our soul, our mind, and our spirit would be open to that which you want to teach us today. Yes. I pray as we read the scripture today, God, that we will read on the illumination of the Holy Spirit. And so, God, I just thank you. We come together in the name of your son, Christ Jesus, for he is the way. There is no other way by which man can come to you except through his son, Christ Jesus. We come, God, to just give you the thanks, God. We worship you this morning, God. We praise you with every pore in our body. Open our mouth, God, that we may praise you. Let the animals praise you this morning. May the fish in the ocean praise you, God, because you are worthy of it, Jesus. And so, God, we worship you today because you're God. 
There's none other like you. You are omnipresent, omnipresent, and omnipotent. And there's nothing, God, that is too hard for you. Yes. So, God, as we gather today in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, I pray that you would bless this service. May your presence be in this building today, God, as we worship and we praise you. God, yes, I pray Lord. that you would speak through the pastor's mouth today, that he will repeat, God, what you have already said. Yes. I pray, God, that you would give him boldness, and I pray, dear Lord, that oh, you Lord. would just guide him. And you do, you do the talking, God, through his mouth, and God. And so I bless every family that is here today. We all have our trials. We all have our problems in life, God. But help us to remember, Jesus, that there is nothing that can happen to us unless it is allowed by the hand of all of yes. our sovereign Lord in Jesus, Jesus Christ. And that there's nothing, God, that is too big. Our no problem is too big for you, God. There is no sickness that you can't heal. And so, God, we thank you today. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. It was and is to come. <clears throat> and the songwriter said, I'm going to praise the Lord while I got a chance. Because, you know, we may not get this opportunity no more. So let's just praise him today. And God said, when there are two or more gathered in my name, I'm in the presence. So we don't have to have this building filled with people today. God said, when it's two or more, yes. or even if it's just one, he said, I am the presence. I'm in your presence. So, God, we know that you're here today, God. And, and we just love you. We are committed to you, God. We commit our bodies, our souls, our mind, and our spirit to you today. Today and for all eternity, God. You are the one that we will praise and that we will live for. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, not our will be done but that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 Why don't you give us a report on your, on your daughter while I tune, oh. tune this up? Okay. Okay, would you please? Yes. As some of you know, my daughter had a, a total cardiac arrest. And I just found out something this week where it said that there's a difference between a heart attack and total cardiac arrest. Most people can survive a heart attack, but when your heart completely shuts down, the electrical system leaving to your heart, going to your heart shuts down, only about 20% of the people will live from this, okay? So she had a major heart attack. She went without oxygen to her brain for a few minutes and that's why she has a hard time now remembering things that she needs to remember are talking she frequently um, can't remember you know she started talking and all of a sudden just it's not there anymore so because of the I can't explain it exactly but it was the elect there's something electrical goes on and when you have a uh, uh, cardiac arrest it takes time for the memory to come back and so you can remember she has not been able to work because her job was she had to have a great memory and see if she's not able to work anymore but the doctor said in time that she would get that back again she will be able to she can start a sentence and with the two minutes she's gotten what she said or what she was supposed to say so that's why I need you guys to really pray that God will bless her and that at some point she'll be able to go back to work. It's going to be a while because she has another surgery coming up next month. But I'm still believing and trusting in God. He said his, his, uh, his ears are open to the prayers of the righteous, but yes. his face is turned against those who do evil. And he also mm -hmm. said that, I'm going to personalize this, okay? I mean, he said to me, kind of, Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. <laughs> that yeah. my Father shall be glorified in heaven. Oh, yes. And he said that if I seek after him, he, was, um, he would give me. If I abide in him and his word remains in me, I could ask what I want and he will give it to me. And so I know that and I stand on the promise of God's word. Not Nothing I can do, but I believe that God's word is eternal. And he said, my purpose will stand. He can do anything that he wants, anything that he pleases. 
But the good thing is he said, I hear the prayers of my people and I will answer them. Yeah. And I just want to pray, Sister um, um, uh, TG is coming home next week, right? That's what we his mom so. told me. We hope so. so. Yes. We just want to thank God for that. And we praise God that he's coming home and his son has already came home. And so God, just like I said, just keep me in my prayers. My daughter's dealing with a lot of depression right now, saying, you know, why me, God? Why did you do this to me? And so I just pray that God will take away the depression and the anxiety, God. And just, it's, it's hard. It's very hard. It's very difficult to see someone and young and vibrant and something like this happen. Mm -hmm. We have a question? Does your daughter have a name? Her name, is, I pray, I pray. Pray. Her name is Misha, M-I-S-H-A. That's a good question. Okay, M-I-S-H-A. So let's keep my whole family in your prayers because it's been hard on all of us. Amen. Okay. And thank you again. God bless all of you. Oh, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, keep Pastor Evelyn in prayer. She's in Colorado. Uh, keep me in prayer. I go to the doctor tomorrow because um, I've had this thing now for almost four weeks and uh, I need to have a check to see what's wrong. If they can diagnose something because it is God that heals, but he uses doctors. He uses doctors. I mean, I'm, I'm believing that my doctor will find the issue and be able to <clears throat> address it because I love to praise the Lord and sometimes I have no voice, uh, you know, so amen. And, you know, I like to talk, too, you know, but, <laughs> but praise the Lord. Um, hallelujah. So I'm going to try singing the song that I did last Sunday where, you know, I ended up doing two songs, you know. But uh, uh, we'll see what happens here. Amen. And there's a song that. I know the chorus to it. some songs picked out I 
here to tell the story of you, my Lord, I am here. When the storm rages, I shall not doubt. When the wind is blowing, Lord, I will look to you. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory to thy name. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I am here to praise the great. Savior of my soul, the one who washed and cleansed and made me whole. The blood was shed and the tears they did fall, for I saw you on the cross. Oh Lord, you gave your all. Father God, we give you praise and glory, Father God. There is none like you, Father God. We will not let the adversary have victory. We will not have him influence our lives, Father God, but we will stand upon the rock. We will stand upon your promises, Father God. For you are Lord God Almighty. There is none like you. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. You are the great I Am. And Lord, unto you we surrender all that we are, Father God. People can speak with many words and say nothing, Father God, but those who stand in silence stand to worship you, Father God. For they have learned to listen to the greater, not the lesser. For you are the great I am. And when you speak, Father God, it is up to us to listen, to choose to hear your words. You are the healer. No matter what situation that we find ourselves in, whether it be blood, whether it be a heart attack, whether it be migraines, whether it be diabetes, whether it be any form of sickness and illness that can be thrown upon man, we trust in you, Father. We trust that you are the way maker, that you are the healer. It is by your stripes, Father God, that we are healed. It is by your stripes, Father God, that we are healed. We believe your word. We believe your, the truth. For you are the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way than which we can go to heaven, no other way in which we can see the Father, but by you. Father God, we give you all the praise and all the glory, Father God. 
for we are the sons and daughters. And because we are, we cry, Abba. We cry, Abba, unto you, the creator of all. I'm like, God, we thank you, Father God. You are the cosmic birther of the universe. One author wrote, Hallelujah. There is nothing that you did not create that wasn't created by you, for you, for your glory. To you we give all the praise and the glory and the honor, Father God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory. Since I lay my burdens down, burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord, since I lay my burdens down, burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord, since I lay my burdens down, going home to be with Jesus since I laid my burdens down. Going home to be with Jesus since I laid. Glory, glory, sing it. I said four weeks of this, I'm tired of it. So I made an appointment. I went to uh, uh, urgent care um, and they gave me a Z pack. I think you probably are all familiar with Z packs, you know, and it seemed to help. But when I start talking, my voice just <laughs> goes away. <laughs> so after all these years of spraying, painting, I think, you know, there's something that needs to be taken care of. I just like you to take me home. And it's like, <laughs> take me home, Lord. But as long as I'm here, I'm going to do whatever he tells me to do and how he tells me to do it. So normally I'd have my wife here and she would be reading scripture today <clears throat> as she did two weeks ago. That was a blessing because it saved my voice a little bit, but amen. So, Connie, please come up here. Please. I got the scripture right here for you. Well, she's a deacon of the house, so she has to help out. <laughs> I have to stand right here with you, okay? Yeah, grab that mic right there. Grab that mic right there, amen. Okay, we'll turn the button on. Turn it on until it turns green. Yep, hold that down until it turns green. Try it. There we go. The camera's fine. Okay, so we're reading. We're, we're in Mark 5, 25 through 34 is where we're reading. Okay, so that's how you move it. Okay. Amen. Please read. Mark 5. 25 through 34. 
to that, the sex. A woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and had endured much at the hands of many physicians, had spent all that she had and had not helped at all, but rather had grown worse. After hearing about Jesus, she came up in the crowd behind Whoa. him and touched his coat. <laughs> for she thought, if I just touch his garments, I will be well. Immediately, the flow of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Immediately, Jesus, perceiving in himself that the power proceeded, <coughs> proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my body? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see the woman who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Lord, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen. 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 That's the NASB. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So I'll probably end up reading the whole thing over again a little bit, but <clears throat> God, God will help me through it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Now, you might know I've got my shoes off. Did you know I broke my toe a few weeks ago or like a couple months ago, actually? So I was trying to wear my shoes today instead of wearing my sandals and my foot just started hurting so bad. So I got my socks on though, so my, you know. But you know, it's okay, it's the way it is, you know. Um, I'll go barefoot if I have to, I don't care, you know. <laughs> Amen. Now we're talking about the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. There are people in here today and people who are watching who have had issues for a long, long time. It doesn't matter, I'm not gonna start naming all kinds of issues, but there's, there's a multitude of issues that people carry with them. From many words, from pride on down to hate, to anger, frustration, all, all kinds of issues. Just because they mentioned here that it was blood related, hemorrhaging, doesn't negate the idea or the principle that we all at one point or another have issues, that we all have problems. Because before we came to Jesus, before I came to Jesus, I gotta talk about myself. Before I came to Jesus, I had all kinds of, you know, drugs, alcohol, you know, drugs, sex, and rock and roll. You know, I mean, let's, you know, call it like it is. It was everything, everything under the sun. But it didn't, didn't involve the sun. All right, it involved my own flesh, my own desires, and we've all gone through it. For those of us who have done drugs continuously in a long, long time in our life, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a thing of, how can I quit, how can I quit? But in 1980, in 1980, God stepped into my life and changed my whole life, took me away from Michigan, brought me down here, and he took away every desire and every need I had for drugs and alcohol. I didn't know he was doing it. I just came down here and was, I was at ease. I was at comfort. I wasn't around my same old friends doing my same old thing. You know, I was with the new people and none of them were doing what I, what I used to do. So I had, my desire had just dissipated, you know. And then in 1984, when he saved me, when I went down the water and gave a baptism, I was completely cleansed. I had really no desire whatsoever for any kind of drugs. I still struggle with smoking. They say that nicotine is actually worse than anything else. I kind of believe it does because I got rid of coke. I got rid of methamphetamines. I got rid of black beauties and Christmas trees and, you know, white crosses. Oh, that's all before your times, okay? All you who didn't do drugs, you don't know anything I'm talking about, amen? You know, that's, that's speed for anybody else. I was, I was a speed freak. I get wired for seven, eight days, okay? I stay wired and then, and then crash for two or three days. Usually only two, so I always had to go to work. I always made it to work. 
I very seldom missed work, okay, due to my habits. Amen. But I was still getting high at work. Amen. But I say all this right here to, to, to say this, is that we all have issues in our life. We've all had issues in our life. Some of us, we've given them to Jesus, and some of them, like I always say, we kind of put in our back pocket just for that rainy day when, when we need something to crawl back on and say, oh, I can remember, you know, and, and you live that little life for a moment, you know, and then you have to choose whom you're going to serve. You have to choose whether you're going to turn back that way or whether you're going to go that way, you know. But this woman here, she had a hemorrhage, hemorrhaging, bleeding out, nonstop. When you're in sin, you're in nonstop. You are bleeding out when you're in sin. Now, I want to kind of look at this from Jesus' perspective just a little bit here. I want to look at it not from the woman's perspective necessarily, but from Jesus' perspective. It said here, go with verse 27 real quick here. After hearing about Jesus, she came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak. Now, first of all, I want to mention as we get into what Jesus was feeling and thinking and his reaction is that she had to press in. As I told you before, and I've preached many times, not many times, but a few times, uh, uh, Jesus was surrounded by all of his admirers, all the looky loos You know, he's like a rock star. He came into town and everybody had to go see Jesus. But they didn't have to go see him for the right reasons. So you could kind of look at it this way. And when I was reading this, God gave me this, this, this idea or present in my heart. These people that were around Jesus, they were religious people. They were seeking for religious relief. They were seeking for a religious answer to their problems and situations. They weren't seek seeking a kingdom answer. They wanted the king right now to solve all their problems instantaneously so they could have what they wanted, so they could be in control. So these were the religious people, and we have a lot of religious people around us. We have a lot of religious people that, that are uh, 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 denomination locked in, I'm a Baptist, and if you're not a Baptist, you're not going to heaven. Oh, I'm a Methodist, and if you're not a Methodist, you're not going to heaven. Oh, if you're not, you know, every kind of reason they can. But there was no denomination. There was no Christian denomination or the way denomination. There was only one way, and that was Jesus' way. But man has interjected himself into it, and all these looky-loos around Jesus has decided there that they were going to create their religion their way, and when they came to him, they would come as they wanted to come. But the woman, when she came, she came not looking, not looking at a person. She came looking for the answer. She came looking that there was a way that she saw in Jesus that was going to heal her. She, she had heard the stories of him going from town to out, town, healing and raising the dead. She saw all these things going on. She heard about all these things going on. And some of you, that's how you came to church, is you heard about Jesus. You heard about how much he loves, how much he cares, how he's healed people, how he's delivered people, how he's set people free. So when you came to church, you had your own motive. She had a motive, I guess you could say, you know, she had blood, she, she was hemorrhaging. You know, she had done, sold everything that she had, given up everything, just to get healed. And no, nothing worked. The doctors, the soothsayers, and all these witchcraft things. Oh, you gotta take this mud, you gotta take this here, and mix it together with this, and drink that, and all this kind of stuff didn't work. But when you hear about the truth, when you hear about the truth and it sinks down inside of you, when the light goes off in the darkness that you've been walking in, you do everything you can to get to the light. You do every 
everything to get to the light. Yes, I see a light that shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. Okay, and immediately, immediately, verse 29. Verse 29, immediately the flow of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her afflictions. Immediately, now we're going to talk about Jesus. Okay? Immediately, not an hour after she'd done it, not a minute or two after she had done it. Immediate means instantaneous, right there and then, when it happens, okay? There was no delay. Immediately, Jesus perceiving in himself that the power proceeded from him had gone forth. Turned around to the crowd and said, who touched my garment? Now, nothing surprises God. Jesus, how do I say this? I got to get the word in my head here. I know what her daughter goes through, okay? I have the word here, but getting it to here doesn't work sometimes. So <clears throat> I have to do a workaround, and that's what your daughter has to learn. She has to learn how to do the workaround. So when Jesus immediately acknowledged that someone had touched his garment, he wasn't caught off surprise, because why did he come there? He came for her. All the people gathered around him, all those religious people, all those looky-loos, oh, there's Jesus, oh yeah, okay. They had no really no interest in him except what he could do for their religion, for their own personal thought. She, in return, had an idea and a concept that there is one who can help me. Yeah. And if I get to him, if I can just get to him, and if I just push, if I just persevere, if I just wiggle my way through the crowd, even if I got to crawl, because it said in the Bible that she touched the hem of his garment. She didn't touch him on the shoulder. She didn't touch him on the side. She touched him at the lowest part the hem of his garment. To me, that means that she had to be on her hands and knees. She was pushing her way, no matter what it took to get to Jesus. I wonder today how many people that are watching, even in here, realize what it takes to get to Jesus. It doesn't take raising your hand doesn't take repeating a prayer. It takes your heart, which is hemorrhaging, to go to Jesus, to call upon Jesus to touch the hem of his garment. That's what it takes. And immediately it says Jesus perceiving in himself that the power proceeding oh. from him had gone forth. In other words, the power of the Holy Ghost touched the woman when she touched the garment. Power of the Holy Ghost. And his disciples said, because, you know, the disciples, they're cool dudes. Okay? They're trying hard. they got a lot to learn. In a short time, they do it. They don't know how short it is, but in a short time, they do it. Three and a half years to learn everything that they can about Jesus. Okay? Let's be real. You know, these guys are 19, 18, 17, maybe as old as 20 years old, maybe. You know, they're not very old, okay? They're young men. <clears throat> I wish I was a young man. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, they were young men. So their, their attitudes and how they looked at things were a little bit different than probably what they should have been, okay, at, the, at that moment. The disciples said to him, you see the crowd passing around you, and you say, who touched me? Like, <laughs> come on now. But they didn't understand that virtue Virtue had gone forth. Virtue, when she touched him, 
She received virtue. She, she received love. She received deliverance. She received healing. She received restoration. She received Jesus. It wasn't matter where she got to him as long as she got to him. On the hem of her feet, on the hem of his clothes, on the ground kneeling. Can you imagine that ground was all muddy? Let's take you through the whole thing. Things that you may not think of. Okay? They didn't walk on paved roads. The places they walked, animals walked. It was muddy, stinky, dirty, filthy. The very same thing that the people call her unclean because of her issues of blood. Thinking that they had it all going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just unclean. You got to stay away from us. We don't, we don't want your, your sickness. You see, when you go to Jesus, you go to Jesus on your own. You don't go by proxy of a whole bunch of people. You go because your heart is crying out. It's been hemorrhaging. It's been bleeding. It's been torn apart. It's been beat up. It's been stepped on. It's been broken. But coming to Jesus, hallelujah, coming to Jesus heals the brokenhearted, the Bible says. You got to understand that we got to get to Jesus. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how long you think you've known God. Today, you got to get to Jesus. You've got to press in. You've got to press through. You cannot back down. You cannot turn away. You've got to make up your mind that no matter what, you are going to see and touch the hem of the garment of Jesus. No matter how dirty and how muddy and how clammy you may get, how many silly you may look, how much slobber you may be slobbering out, it does not matter. What you're doing is you're stretching forth by faith to touch the hem of his garment. We have to get to the place where each and every day, that is our reaction to get to Jesus. These little short little prayers. Oh, Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for waking me up. Hallelujah. Goodbye. No. You've got to spend time with Jesus. You've got to get to a place where, I don't care, get up 10 minutes early to spend 10 minutes with him. Why do we keep cutting Jesus off? Why do we take him as a second class God? That's what we're doing. Oh God, I'll come worship you when I want to worship you. All the looky loos around him, all that. They didn't follow him. He came to town, okay, hey, we're up here, we're seeing G. Everybody's, hey, hey, did you hear Jesus? Come on, Jesus is here. Let's go, hey, let's go see him. Let's go. No, they had no heart to really know who he was. All they wanted to be was looky loos and seas. That's all they wanted to do. You see, when you gotta, when you gotta get to the presence of God, you've got to get on your hands and your face. You've got to call in the name of Jesus. You've got to dive in. You gotta be relentless. You can have a form of godliness. You can say all kinds of scriptures. We had a gentleman in here earlier. He could, he was quoting all kinds of scriptures. And I'm just sitting there listening. And I'm praying for him right now because. Quoting all those scriptures was great, but he had no doctrine. He, 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 had no, he had nothing behind it, okay? God wasn't there. He knew some words. There are lots of people who know some words. They feel that they have a relationship with Christ, but really all they have is a form of godliness, and they're denying the power thereof. The woman crawled on her hands and her knees and got on her face to touch the hem of his garment, and she received power. Are you willing to receive power that way? Are you really, really willing to get, go that far to be in the presence of God? Hallelujah. His disciples said unto him, you see the crowd pressing on you, and you say, who touched me? <laughs> you know, we thought you were brother than that, Jesus. Don't you see all the people right here? We're all just clamped in real tight. Don't you know that everybody's bumping into you? Everybody, and you're saying, who touched me? Because the one that touched him was coming after him. 
Not coming to see him, but coming after him. you got to want to come after God. Hallelujah. You can have that form of God that's all you want. But when you get to heaven, you might hear the words you don't want to hear. Depart from me. Depart. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. <laughs> You're stinky, okay? Get away from me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You see, Jesus is more than willing to give you of himself. Amen. But you have to come yes, seek, after him. seek after him. Yes, seek ye first oh, the kingdom of God yes. and all of his righteousness and then all these things be added unto you. All the loopy-loos, all the religious people and all that, they weren't seeking after him. They were seeking after me. Hey, yeah, I saw Jesus. You see me there? I was there. Yeah, I saw him too. Did you see what he did? Yeah, wow. I, that's what they are. But you got to seek him. You got to dive in. You got to press towards the mark of a higher calling. That higher calling may be found on your face, on your knees before the Lord. That's where you may need to be. And you may be slobbering. You may be <laughs> crying. You may be screaming. You may be yelling. You may be praising. You may be dancing. Whatever it takes. But you've got to get into the presence of God. The word, the word says enter into his courts. In other words, enter into his presence. Enter into him. Okay? Enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Into his presence with praise. She found a way to honor him and get to him. Her praise was on her hands and knees, crawling to him. She worshiped, she believed, and she received. Hallelujah. But the woman, 33, but the woman fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, she knew that she had been healed. Any of you in here? Know when you've been healed? Let me tell you a little story real quick. I had a lump on my wrist, probably about an inch high on my wrist, right? So I was going to go to the doctor. I went to the doctor and he said, Well, you got to have surgery because you got tunnel or whatever they called it, okay? Yeah, carpal tunnel. It was really big. And an evangelist had come to church. This evangelist, called me out and prayed for me. And when he prayed for me, I didn't, it was still there. And he was there for a whole week. But I didn't think anything more of it. I didn't think anything more of it. But after the end of the week, he called me back up again and he asked me, show me your hand. I don't know when it disappeared. I don't know when. But I do know that it did. I do know that God's word was true. What the, what the man of God had spoken, God brought it forth. And my hand, my wrist was healed in Jesus' name. You see, we don't always recognize when Jesus is moving in our lives and doing things in our life. But right then, she instantaneously knew. No more flow. Now, I feel whole. Have you ever felt whole? Have you ever prayed to God and he just made you feel whole? That he's taken away that care, that trouble, that, tr that tribulation, that he's just delivered you out of it, that that storm no longer can affect you? Why? Because he said it. Because he did it. Hallelujah. Now, I, got, I like this, this next part here. Jesus. Once again, we're back to Jesus again. you got to get a hold of this. You've got to catch this. Verse 34. And he said to her, Daughter, Jesus is 33 and a half years old, or 33 and a quarter years old, or 32, whatever it was at that time. And he turned around and said, Daughter, who has the right to call anyone daughter? The Father. The father. He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. 
Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Daughter. She was no longer a slave. She was no longer a slave to sin. She was no longer a slave to illness and sickness. She was now empowered. When she became empowered, guess what? She became a what? Daughter. Are you a daughter? Okay, are you a son? What are you believing? What level has God got you at? And what level do you need to go to? Oh, there's no level. Yes, there's levels in, 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 in the kingdom of God. Because first, to be called sons and daughters, we first are servants. Servants of the Most High. And then we became sons and daughters of the Most High. It did not change what we were supposed to do. It just changed our title. Because he valued us. And he wanted us to know that the value meant a whole lot to him. Okay? Your value is in your son and the daughter. There's value in a servant, too. Don't get me wrong. Anybody that's watching, you have value. God values you. He loves you. He, did, he loves you enough to go to the cross for you. Amen? But she became a daughter. And when he, she became a daughter, she became healed. And she did it in Jesus' name because that's who she went to. She went to Jesus. Who is now the author and the finisher of her faith. Daughter. Son. There's something about when you hear your, your father call your name. When you hear his little love words, daughter of mine. You're my daughter. You're one of my favorites. You're my son. You're one of my sons. You're my favorite. There's something about that when you hear the father call you and say, daughter, go forth. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace, be healed. Hallelujah. Your afflictions. When Abba speaks, it's time to listen. All those people around him, all those people to the right and the left and the front and the back, all crowded. Oh, look at Jesus. Oh, look at Jesus. Oh, look at Jesus. None of them wanted a relationship. None of them really wanted an encounter. They were too busy being prideful of themselves. Look at, look at him. I'm standing around Jesus. We're all here at Jesus. Oh, yeah, it's party time, man. Let's go have a party after this. Just, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. But when you come to meet the real Jesus, when you come to meet him, there's something special that happens. Okay? Life is changed. So you can be a religious person not even know it. You can talk about Jesus, you can speak about Jesus, you can act around, you can do all kinds of stuff, but you, all you have is a form of godliness. Not until you have a personal relationship where you hear Abba call you daughter or son. The Bible says you are no longer son, no longer servants, but now sons and daughters. Then, and then alone, do you know that God is real in your life? He's taking you to another place that you weren't before. He now not only just knows your, you as, as, as Lori or Karen or anybody for that matter. Okay? Now he's, he's getting personal. You're my daughter. And I just made you whole. I just gave you power. That power healed you. My Holy Spirit healed you. Wow. I know this is a familiar story to some, but I hope we touched on some things maybe you never thought about before. I hope there's something in there that makes you think about who you are, about how you have to press in. 
The Bible says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Daughter, come. Edward, come. Lori, Gloria, come. Helen, come. Everyone. Deke, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for your prayer, Deke. I've been waiting for you to call on me because you always, you always share the best time with me, Deke. Come on, Connie, my daughter. I want to hear your prayer one more time. I want to, I want to, I want to hear from you. And that's how he treats all of us. He wants to hear from us. He wants us to respond. And he also wants us to hear from him. <clears throat> what a thing it would be to, to know Jesus in a manner that draws you so close that you have an intimate relationship that when you just say the name of Jesus, yeah. he responds instantaneously. Just as the woman who touched his garment instantaneously, he knew that she had touched his garment. And the reason he turned around and said, who touched me? Is because that she had to confess that I'm the one that crawled to you. I'm the one that came to you. I'm the one. And when she realized what she was saying, then God himself said, yes, and you are made whole. Just go ahead. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. Your faith has made you whole. What a day that would be that, you know, it'll be when we can say Abba and then he responds instantaneously hallelujah I do want to say that he does respond to us right away sometimes we just ain't listening I use the word ain't we ain't listening because we get too busy with noise around us turn on the TV jump online you know put our face in a book Instead of waiting and listening for the Lord, we get anxious. We pray five minutes, and five minutes after that, we're doing something. He was, he's just settling down and still have a conversation with you, and then you're turning away already. Take time to hear from the Lord. Take time to listen to him. Amen. In Psalms 118, 4 through 6, Psalms 118, four through six and I'm almost done and then we're going to start something else here praise the Lord I want to read this one scripture here it's on my heart Psalms 118 four through six hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you for being a loving caring God thank you for responding when we as your children come to you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let those who fear the Lord say his loving kindness is everlasting. For my distress, I call upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and he set me in a large place. The Lord is for me. I will not fear what man can do to me. Hallelujah. Drop down to verse 8 real quick here. <clears throat> verse 8 says, It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Hmm. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princesses. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, I give you all the praise and glory and honor, Father God. Father God, as we come before you today, we thank you for your word, Father God. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, Father God. And Father, we pray, Father God, that we take time to not only seek you, but to wait upon you, Lord. To wait upon you to touch and guide us and to lead us in the path of righteousness. For you, Lord, and you alone are holy. And to you we give all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now we're going to be starting... <clears throat> Excuse me, here. You may notice that it's just a little bit after 11. 
<clears throat> so I ain't letting you go yet. <laughs> that ain't happening. This is what we're going to be calling family, t family time. Now, I'm not going to put the cameras on you guys because I haven't asked your permission or anything. So I'm just putting the camera here because people are going to be watching a little bit. All right? Amen. This is what we call family time. Freshwater Ministries. I want us to start a new chapter in Scripture based upon the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, it says that after they got done in the temple, they went house to house, breaking the bread, ministering the word, sharing with one another. Hallelujah. Okay. So, amen. So, today, hallelujah. You know, there we go. It is there. Today's message was about how we hemorrhage, how we go through things, how things can affect us in our lives, how it affected the woman with the issue for 12 years. Edwin's kind of test testified a little bit, a few things in his life. He went through some issues and some problems. You all hear my testimonies. I'm not afraid to share, like I shared already earlier, that I actually got mad at my wife. Yeah, that's not me. But I was frustrated. I was frustrated because she's gone. Okay? I was frustrated because we had a few communication where we couldn't talk about some things. So I actually got angry. Didn't yell or scream or cuss or anything like that, okay? But I got so angry that she hung up the phone on me. I was so frustrated. Of course, I had to apologize and, you know, but rightfully so. Because I was allowing emotions yes. to affect me at that moment. Her being gone, me wanting her there, me cleaning the house after the boys had been there, you know, my back was hurt, you know, you, know, you can think of all these things, you know, that were going on, right? This thing, I had me able to go up and see TJ because I didn't want to make, I want to make sure I'm not giving, giving him anything in close quarters. Now, I don't have no fever, no nothing. It's just that my throat is, is in a sad place. So, <clears throat> Family time is about talking about the scripture today, what we got out of it, what we what we understand through it, um, and asking questions. I'm not asking for people to spend 10, 15 minutes. I want you to keep your time short when we start talking. Gloria, last week, was it last week? The week, week before last? Everyone talked. Gloria surprised me. She surprised me because she never talks. Ellen, same thing. There's, they're quite, quite quiet, right? But everybody spoke. I'm not requiring you to speak because sometimes in a family discussion, sometimes you don't talk, you let other people talk. I understand that. But if you have questions about today's message, if you have a thought about the, today's message, something that I didn't bring out, okay? I want to give you this time as family so we can talk about scripture and we can go through and Maybe see some things that, you know, maybe that I missed or maybe that you see coming out of that scripture. It's very important, okay, because we grow and learn together. I am your pastor, and I'm honored to be your pastor. I'm honored that God gave me this position here, and that was... <clears throat> so, if you want to look, turn in your Bibles to Mark 5, 25... Okay, you want, if you want to turn back there and just pull out maybe something that you see in the scriptures there that I didn't see, teach me something, because I don't know everything, okay? I don't know everything. And anyone that thinks that they know 
everything is a fool. Yep. Even some people that think they know a little something can be a fool too. Because a little bit of knowledge can be dangerous also. You have to find that balance in Christ Jesus. <coughs> So I'm going to start out with Edwin. I took him last last time. So I'm going to start out with Edwin. He's always got something to say. Amen. Amen. Uh, always got something to say. Yeah. I think, yeah, we'll get to you. You did a really good job too last time. Really good. She said amen and everything. It was just right on point. There was actually so much that touched you because it brought back. No. Man. But the part that I want to really touch everybody on was the very end. I became a son of God, and I finally gave all at the end. You become a child of God when all of a sudden you completely have faith and trust in Him for everything. That's what happened with this woman. She had complete faith Amen. and trust that Jesus could do what no one else could. And at that moment, she was the daughter. When we get to the point where nothing else can help you, no one else can do anything for you, you put your full trust and faith in God. That's when you are strong. And you also obey. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all part of it. A, tri a child obeys their parent. A young child. The Bible says that we need to be children. Uh, be as a child. So you know, a young child trusts their parents in everything. And they will do whatever their parent says. Okay, amen. Very true. Anybody else? Who else wants? Huh? It's okay. So what this means to me is pretty much how I lived my life as an addict. I had a really rough life, but I made that life rough because of what I did, what I chose to do. And God was always with me. He got me through so many storms, so many obstacles. Um, I should have been dead so many times. I could have killed people so many times just the way I was off driving and drinking and drugging. And the way I lived my life was unbelievable when I think back about it. Um, but God knew that he could pull me through it, and he knew it was going to happen on, on my time, unfortunately, when I was ready to receive him. Uh, and I wasn't ready to do that until a little over two years ago. About two and a half years ago, I finally just surrendered. I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't live the life I was living anymore. Um, I didn't feel worthy of even being alive anymore. My addiction got so bad. But I had to hit rock bottom before I could surrender, um, and I did. I don't think I could have gone down any farther. I'm surprised I'm still alive to even talk about it, um, the way I was living. But thank God, my sister was also newly in Alcoholics Anonymous. She got me into the doors of AA, um, and that's where I had got my connection with God. I saw what this program has done for everybody in these rooms that are now sober, living years and years sober. None of these people could have gotten sober without God. It's all on God's grace. It's all on God's timing. But you have to totally surrender for it to work. And I finally totally surrendered. When Evelyn walked by the break room door that day at my job, um, I was just only about a month sober. And I told her I was looking for a church, and she's like, well, you know what? I got a deal for you. Oh. And she told me about this place. Um, I don't even think I knew you were a pastor. My mind was just so, you know, I was so, I was just, I was messed up. But when she got this up and told me about it, she handed me the card. And um, 
I started coming in here and it just completely mm. transformed my life. Then I got baptized and um, AA is a very spiritual mm. program as well. We pray in every meeting and you know, people might not think that AA is a spiritual program, but it is it's very spiritual. And between Alcoholics Anonymous and God and, and church and, and all you guys, um, I can I can relate to this lady crawling up and touching the cloak, the bottom of his cloak, because that's where I was at. And he took the obsession away from me. He took the addiction away from me. And I'm just so, so grateful. Amen. To God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Who else wants to talk? Amen. Here I am today. Amen. And I am very grateful for what God has done for me because I did a lot of stuff in my younger days, but he also sent me this girl for me to take care of. And it's, it hasn't been an easy road, but she's what's kept me going. And then when we moved from Chandler over here to next door to my sister. Mm -hmm. I have learned a lot and it brings me great pleasure to be around her and see things because she knows a lot more about God than I do. And I hear so much. And so now that I have a, a problem with or fear from what angels going through, I call on God, I call, and I know that he's answered a lot of my prayers. So we're um, hanging in there. And uh, as long as I, I feel now that as long as I call on the Lord, I'm going to be all right and so is Amen. 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 Jesus are angels. Amen. I just, uh, I've been through some of the same things as you guys said. My, I never went on drugs, but I had a lot of family members that were doing it. A lot of family members that were taking drugs and alcohol and all those things. But you know, I, I'm not a super saint. I, I have flaws, I have problems, and I have problems just like everyone else does. But I know that I am rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus and that the wind may blow in my life and there's going to be storms and there's going to be trials and there's going to be all this other stuff that's done. But I know that I am grounded in Christ Jesus. And I always say, I may bend sometimes, but I won't break. Because <laughs> okay? God is my refuge and my keeper. So like I said, I've, I've been there. I've done that with family members. And I thank God today that I never did get into that kind of lifestyle myself. But there's a scripture in the Bible where God says, don't remember the former days of old because I'm about to do a new thing. Amen. <laughs> I want to make a road in the desert and a path in the wilderness. So we don't quite cling to what happened in the past. But he said, don't remember those things. I'm doing something new in your life. And that's what he has done for you guys. Don't remember, I'm about to do a new thing. And so, like I said, I've been there. I've done that with family members. And I often, you know, sometimes I do look back over my life because I uh, grew up in South Phoenix. Uh, my dad died when I was 11 years old. My mother, just before she met my father, she had a, she came down with polio. Mm. And so she was, uh, really unable to walk for a long time. And then when she was able to walk, she had to use, you know, some kind of support to walk with. Right. More polio. But after my father died, my mother was a believer, you know, and back in the 60s and the 50s. And he was our sole support. We had nothing else to live on, nothing else to do. But I remember hearing my mother pray a lot of times she would say, God, I don't know how I'm going to feed my kids, <laughs> but I'm going to give it to you, Jesus. It's in your hand. So I thank God 
because I know if some of these had not happened in my life, I probably wouldn't be here today. Amen. <laughs> because I love the Lord. I'm completely committed to Him. I commit today, tomorrow, and for all eternity, I will serve Him. Amen. But everything that is in me, I will praise Him. And the song I said, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, I totally and completely depend on God for every breath I take and every move I make. So He's been good to me. And so, like I said, I'm going to hold on to His unchanging hand. Even in the midst of what I'm going through myself. And I know that sometimes God, oh, I just want to read something that I wrote. I hope I can find it again. It's something I wrote back. But like 2004, <laughs> a long time ago, Amen. It, it said, God's power could prevent trials in our lives, but in his wisdom, he permits it. And this is why. There is something that we are lacking, so the purpose of the trial is not for something to be taken away from us. It is so that the Father can bring something to you in Jesus for you and your family. So the purpose of the trial is, you know, is that the Father, he wants to do something for us. Right. And so, you know, it is, the scripture says, count it as joy as we go through various trials and tribulations. Right. So, I still got a long way to go, but I think I'm on the right road now. Amen. Amen. You asked my review about it. I believe I am because couple of weeks back, I moved into my house to the Lord, and uh, everything is different than the first time. So the first time I did receive it, uh, I prayed after somebody, but told me to get ready for anything, but this time it was in my prayer. Amen. And I did that because Pastor mentioned to me uh, something, you know, to do with that. When you get saved, because you see somebody, it's not your own. So I reviewed it and everything, everything is different. And then with uh, with my boys, it's been a been a hard road in the last couple of months. But uh, I gave Philip a little more. Well, back because I couldn't deal with the, you know, the drugs and everything that he was doing. And uh, but that took care of him. Yeah. He's clean now. All right. Hallelujah. And they told him in no uncertain terms that if he kept going that way and didn't take care of his uh, sugar, he couldn't be sick for or a whole thing. Right. So he's doing real good. Amen. And uh, DJ is doing real good. He still has some balance issues and walking issues, but he's coming home this time. Amen. So God has done it. Nobody, I couldn't have done it without the Lord. Amen. You don't have to speak. You don't want to. It's fine either way. Oh, no, I just want to say, you know, this is. It's just great to know people who actually have a spiritual sense of yeah. a direction where they're going. Like, um, I'm not here to talk about any of my past or things that I went through or the things that I'm still going through or will go through eventually. I just came to actually say thank you to Jesus. Yeah. I've always found myself praying for others and hoping that others can be in their heart and, and their, their, their frame of mind when it comes to Jesus and, and the blessings in which he pours out. But very rarely do I ever take the time to just say thank you for Jesus for just being who he is. Not for the things that he's done, but always knowing that he can be there whenever you call upon him. I can just reverse back to what you're saying, as well as you guys being daughters and sons of, of the most called holy. Um, no, there's really not much I can say. I, between me and Jesus, we have our times throughout the day and in the evenings. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm scared, and I'm thinking about, you know, what does the future hold? But he reaffirms me that let me have this moment in this time I have in, in life to actually just be able to 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 know that you rest in peace. The comfort of somebody right now. Um, they're not that of my own. I appreciate family.
friends. Not those that have come and gone, because none of them have gone. They're all still there. Really? They're just as much a part of me as, as my upbringing. Um, sure, mm-hmm. we all have flaws, and I totally agree with that. Absolutely. I flaw from day to day. I am a walking flaw in progress. Mm-hmm. Will I ever be perfected? I think when the day comes that I'll go before the Lord, only then will I know. But until then, you know, I'm going to do the crawling thing. You know, I fall every day. Sometimes He'll help me get up, and sometimes He keeps me down there on your foot. You know, but it's just it's for my good. So, Amen. you know, if 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 he ever happens to actually come by me, I don't have to put my finger in the holes. I don't have to. I don't have to see. You know, him nailed to the cross or him resurrected. You know, from behind a stone or anything like that. I just have to have faith and know it. I think what sums it up to me is that saying on the wall that says, "You may choose to look the other way, but you can never again say you didn't know." I've always known the things I did, and I've always respect, accepted the responsibilities for that. I can't think of a time where I sat there and said and denied that I was never guilty of the things that I've done in this life. You know, regardless of any kind of knowledge of, of, of Christ or the things that have been done in church or out of church, I'm still going to fall from day to day. I'm just grateful that I have people and friends in my, in my corner. And for those who, who who want to who want to stand against me and what they believe that I I'm about, you know, there's a long line in that too. They can all stand in that line and they take it. I'm good with them. Right. You know, I'm not going to be the one that just says, you know, you can push the ball past the stone. That's a whole other ball. You know what I mean? It's like saying, you know what, there is no not one person. So, right. and, and I agree. You know, so other than that, thank you for allowing me to be here today. I appreciate it. Amen. And by the way, I love the color of the hat shirt as well. You all look nice. So I got, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I got another question, and this is a little more biblical as far as the question goes, or a little more. Well, I'm not going to try and label it, but not, don't let me label it. I'm going to ask the question, okay? Why do you think that? We put Jesus on the back burner in life. When I say that, I'm talking to believers who have just talked about how they love Jesus and how they confess Jesus. But I also have to say there are times in my life, even now, that sometimes I put Jesus on the back burner. And I'll give you an example of my life, because that's all I can do. My studies can always be better. My prayer life can always be better. There are times when God speaks and I do not listen. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. Why is that? I talk about myself, okay? I don't know about the rest of you guys. You guys are all perfect angels. You probably never, you know, never have any problem. You know, you're always talking to Jesus, walking around 24-7. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm high, I'm blessed and highly favored, Jesus. Right, my Lord God. Did I tell you about Jesus? No. No. The thing is, even as a family, we have to be real. Okay? Real in a family is saying that I really got mad at Angel today. I really got up. I mean, she just was acting up, and I just, man, I had to yell at her. I didn't want to yell at her, but I did. Oh, see? She's telling her mom right now. Okay? Those type of things as family. <clears throat> this is family time. There are things you will not share, and I, that's fine. Okay? In family time. There are scriptures that you may have on your heart that you need to, that you feel is really important to share. That's great. I'm not here to get all your secrets. That's between you and God. What I'm here to do is to help lead you in the path of righteousness by telling you my problems and my issues, even as a pastor. Okay? I told about getting mad at my wife. And then she hung up on me because I was just 
I wasn't in the right place. And she was rightfully to do so. Okay? Moments. We cannot let the devil have any ground. And some of those moments that we hold on to, we're giving up ground. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want us to give up ground as a family. If there's something that you can say that you just want to say, Jesus, I'm among witnesses and here I am. I'm just telling you, okay? Why? Because I don't want to give the devil any ground. I don't want him to come back and, and say, well, you know what? This is what happened. This is what she said. This is the response. All this kind of stuff. No. I want it to be dead. I want it to be gone. I want it to be in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered anymore. That's what I want. Because the only way that I can serve God is by not holding on to things that hinder me from him, that keep me from him. So I know everyone's got something to say. That's part of a minister, you know. He's, <clears throat> it's okay. You know, this is not a, a one man show. He's also a guest, but he's also family. I've known him for <clears throat> nine years or so, whatever, whatever period of time it is. There's a lot in there. Speechless because there's this. There's you have to keep that mic up close because some of these speakers here. Usually they talk so loud, and I have to have the mic out here <coughs> and stir it at the same time because it gets a little harder to talk. Um, you know, even today, it was one of those days, you know, where we get oh, yeah. so caught up in what we're doing. I get sometimes so caught up. I have a lot of free time because I'm not able to actually really work. And that free time should be more on my Lord than what I have to say. You know, I have so much free time that it's, you know, I mean, I do sleep a lot because of uh, what's wrong with me, but during the wait time, you know, I do things, you know, I think on things and stuff that I shouldn't. I mean, even this morning, you know, I thank the Lord so much for what he's done in my life. I can walk. I'm walking five miles. Amen. But this morning I was like, Lord, but what if I stop taking the medication? Will I be able to walk because I'm in so much pain with the medication? And truthfully, that was selfish, just because the Lord has brought me so through so much, so why am I questioning? I do know that the Lord understands. My dad, <laughs> you know, I really did not realize what that meant until all this happened. Thank you, my dad. But keep me in prayer because my mind do my mind wanders a lot because I have so much free time. I think you hit on a, on a key point. We. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. But we, you don't have to speak if you don't have anything to say. You're all done. Um, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Because when we don't, our mind drifts. Our, our mind drifts and, and goes all over the place. You know, one of, the, one of the things I posted online, and one of the things I had spoken about, I, I, had did, a, I did a little uh, blog thing, <clears throat> and I talked about 40 years ago, uh, oh, 44, 44 years ago, uh, alcohol, drugs, and sex, okay? 
I watched some porn, stuff like that. It wasn't connected to it, but if it was on, if somebody was watching, I was at some point, somebody was watching it, I watched it, okay? So I was trying to say, that's how we let our minds drift. We get caught up in just the things and we go ahead and just accept them. That new movie out that's out right now about abduction, um, something freedom. Huh? My daughter went to see that yesterday. What, what's the name of it? I can't think of the name of it. I'm going to see it. It's, it's something freedom. No, it's, it's, I think it's. Yeah, something else. It's not freedom of choice. Um, but anyways, child abduction, things like that. As Christians, we just kind of let it go on by. Look, we're a mission church, and we do a lot of wonderful mission work, all right? We are doing a lot of wonderful mission work. But there are children out there that are being kidnapped every single day. They're being raped and abused every single day. Now for those who have not ever been raped or abused in that manner, it's hard to fathom that. But for those who have been, it's not hard to fathom that. How sick people, men and women, can abuse children. And yet, as a body of Christ, we are not rising up to stop it. We aren't speaking out against it. We're not rising up against homosexuality, about being trans. Why? Because we know someone, maybe not directly in our family, but we know someone who's trans, and we feel that if we speak up, we're going to hurt their feelings. Or we know someone who is gay and lesbian. My sister was bisexual. She lived as a lesbian for about 14 years of her life. She found Jesus. Okay? But there are people out there that were afraid to say something and respond to as a body of Christ because, well, you know, we just don't want them talking bad about us. We don't want them saying that, you know, we're homophobic. We're not homophobic. We're talking about sin. We're talking about those things that are against our God. So why aren't we speaking up? Why aren't we saying something? Because get, to get caught up in all of that mess, and you guys know my testimony is that I was a, I was approached as a young boy, and messed with. Okay, well, another word I wanted to use, but I don't, I'm not going to use that word. And but it, I got away from that. But it very easily could have gone the other way. So we have to understand that there are people out there abusing every facet of their life. They're, they're, they're going to hell. Okay? And I'm going to close with this right here. They're, they're born to die. Every one of us in here is born to die. But we have a lifeboat, and the lifeboat is Jesus. He comes to show us the way to get out and away from death and have life and have life more abundantly. Amen? Amen? All right, let's stop here because I've gone over a couple minutes. I know Connie needs to go home to her daughter. And though she's enjoying this, I can tell because she hasn't stood up and walked out right away. Okay? All right, so let's, let's pray. Father God, I give you, Connie, you got the mic, we pray. Go ahead. Uh, a couple of a while back, I prayed Psalm 21 every morning, Psalms 89, Matthew 5 and 6, and Psalms uh, 
Oh, <coughs> those scriptures have really made a change in my life. If you just read them every day, and I personalize mm -hmm. them, you know, I kind of put myself in right. say, if I got, mm -hmm. and, you know, and those have really mm -hmm. transformed my life. I read them every morning. I quote them every day. If you mm -hmm. want to write them down, it's Psalm 21, mm -hmm. Psalms 86, 91, and I'm just going to give an example of how I personalize it. I would say, um, I don't know what I say, if I make the Lord my refuge, if I make the most high my shelter, no evil will come to me. But I also put my, um, God said he will rescue me from every trap. I just personalize it, you know, I, I use me instead of him. And they're very, Powerful scriptures. Just read them every oh, morning okay. or every evening, and as often as you can. If they have really had an impact on my life, it's just reading those scriptures every day. Okay. First thing I get up in the morning, I'm reading them. Okay. And uh, like I said, they, they, in Psalms 23, which is the Lord is my shepherd, mm -hmm. and is another one. So I just wanted to add that back. Another one in Psalms 15. Psalm says the forgiving song. Okay. And um, the Psalms 91, uh, I have shared this with a lot of other Christians, and they're not only reading those scriptures every morning. Yeah. They will make a, a difference in your life as you read them every day. Amen. Amen. Which Matthew, Matthew 6 and 5, that's the Lord's prayer of the Lord is my shepherd. I shall, shall not want. And the other one is, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, you know, the Valley of the Shadow, Psalms 23. Psalms 23. So just read them every day. Connie brings up a great point, uh, real quick here. All of us here, and all of you who are watching, should have favorite scriptures that you go to. And you can learn these scriptures and you, and you learn to, to stand upon them. Trust in the Lord and lean not on thy own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he's going to order my footsteps. Yeah. Okay? We, we make it personal. He's going to order my footsteps. He's ordering my footsteps. Okay? You know? I will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. All right? I. I will. Okay? So I know it says, it says here in the scripture in 91, it's, it, here's how it reads. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So I put in the I. I will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. You see, Scripture should always be personal to us. Okay? We can make it personal by interjecting who we are and connecting with God in that manner. Okay? Now, <clears throat> Connie, pray us out, because I'll, I'll keep on going. Um, I want to say that we come to you again in the name of your very dear son. God, this was an awesome. Please get the mic closer. It was okay. We come to you in the name of your very dear son, and we just want to thank you, God, how you blessed the service today. You spoke through the pastor's mouth this morning. God, I pray that you would help us to write the, your words on the tablets of our hearts so we're not sin against you. And help us to live your word with our faith Amen. today, God, and to be a doer of your word. Amen. And may your grace and mercy be upon us all this week, God, and forever and ever. Keep us, God, with you in the shadows of your mighty words good. as we leave this place today. Bless those that are in need, God, and thank you for remembering the poor, the sick, and the shame. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to take up tithe and offering, and we're just going to, I'm going to pray over it, and we're just going to hand it around to everybody, all right? All right. Father God, bless the gift and the giver this day, Father God. Father God, for those who are able to give, Father God, we thank you, and we praise you and glorify you. Father God, for those who are not able to give, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you, Father God. Father God, touch each and every person, Father God, spiritually, physically, and financially, Father God, as they, Father God, Love on you, Father God, and offer up their prayers of sacrifice unto you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Now, but he'll come back around. I got to get to the grocery store. Yep, I understand. Like I, I can see you were enjoying it today. So that's that's how the new face is of our church. Okay? Oh, I like that. I all right? like it. It's so that we can all talk. Intimate, right. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Well, and take it to her. She's going to go today. She's going to go today. She's going to go today. Oh, you already did? Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I hope you I hope you all enjoyed it today. <clears throat> I'm sorry my voice is stronger today. But God knows exactly what he's doing. And, and my and my doctor's a Christian. So I go in there, we talk for like 20 minutes. Yeah, we, we sit and we sit and talk. Not about medical. We just sit and talk about Jesus. So it gives me the opportunity to sit and talk with and he's from um, Pakistan, no, not, not Pakistan. He's from India. He's from India. And he's a wonderful man of God. He loves the Lord. Well, I hope you come back again, man. I hope you enjoy it. Okay? I don't think I've ever left. My spirit will blow here. Have a good day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's out there where the real test begins. Always. Well, you come. You come here to get filled up for the test that's out there. Well, I don't. I don't fear death. Death is something we no, all the time. You to fear. You come in here to get filled up to deal with the things that are out there. Oh, the spirit in me has been crucified and died to itself already. Amen. Therefore, it's been nothing but Jesus in my life. Amen. I've always known that. Do I practice and walk as Jesus did? Absolutely not. But it goes back to what I was saying about there is no not one perfect. Right. Thank you, Lord. Not one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you want help getting all this put away? No, I'll do it. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. All right. I hate socks twisting. Oh, man. Gosh. Bothered me something. So the guy's got a Yes. 